Yay! Yes, and we we were we almost had uh, Erica's husband pop in as a special guest today, but we may still get Don's dogs as special guest stars. Yeah, bugs around somewhere. I don't know. He just <laughs> wandered away with the toy. So oh. if we're lucky, he'll stay away. Bye. <laughs> Ooh, Jenny the yeah. Oh, this is yeah. Party. That's a pretty Did you see the bulldog. She carved oh. both of my original bulldogs into this one. Oh. Yeah, they are long. Those those two are long gone now. <laughs> that makes me sad. Yeah. But you we have more. We uh, always get more. <laughs> I was gonna say, but you are still fully stocked. I think. Yes, we are fully stocked. Yep. Because Gus is Gus is still with us and much happier. <laughs> so we we. Wow, I haven't seen you guys in such a long time. <laughs> I know. So. There was a, we had a little fender bender with him in the car. It wasn't really a fender bender. It's just the guy in front of me decided to start a three-point turn right in front of me, so I had to slam on my brakes. And the dog was in the car, and, of course, he went flying and knocked one of his canines askew. Yikes. So we had to have that taken out, and when they were in there, they were like, oh, yeah, he's got a bunch of other teeth that need to be taken out. Eight teeth. <laughs> Oh my gosh. They took eight teeth out of <laughs> Um Do you have doggy health insurance? No, we don't. Because doggy health insurance for bulldogs is really expensive anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, we don't, but um it's okay. And he's a heck of a lot happier now that his teeth don't apparently hurt him anymore. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it it's so they're the other problem with bulldogs is they have a crazy high pain and pain tolerance. So a lot of times you just really don't know that there's anything wrong with them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, he's lost a bunch of teeth and he's getting used to his annoying little brother. So yeah. <laughs> I like that. How, how old are they? What's their age difference? Gus is seven and Bug is seven months. Wow. So. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's having to exert all of his big dog patience. <laughs> yeah. Him, he's doing pretty good. You're very yeah. brave. I, uh, puppies scare, <laughs> scare me. I, I, I think puppies are fun. And house training doesn't phase me at all. And it's a lot easier when you have an older dog around because the younger dog just tends to follow the bigger dog. When they go to the bathroom, they go to the bathroom. So. Oh, clever. Um, yeah, it's a lot. That tends to be a lot easier. Um, yeah, puppies don't phase me so much, and a lot of the issues between the two dogs will go away when Bugs going in for in a couple weeks. So, a lot of a lot of their dog dynamics will ease after he's missing some key pieces of anatomy. <laughs> it's funny how that seems to help so many yeah. different things. Right. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We were. We were talking about, oh, it was recidivism cases in uh, a variety of different crimes and how uh, certain chemical alterations in <laughs> men's bodies can mitigate. This, a lot of this came about because Andrew and I are watching Game of Thrones. We never, we never mm -hmm. did before. And I was somewhere and he was bored and so he he started watching it and then he said all right well i watched the entire first season in like two nights <laughs> like, wow because i had tried watching it before and i just was like wow there's there's a lot of rape and killing and rapey killings and killings that started as rapes and i'm so not thrilled and he had had the same reaction we both had tuned into something kind of mid mid show Mm -hmm. And and when we started from the beginning, all I can say is Peter Dinklage. <laughs> He's awesome, and I have to say he was cast perfectly. Cause like I ha I will tell you, I have not watched a single minute. Um, but you read the book. I'm so damn mad he hasn't finished the series. <laughs> I know everybody who's read the books 
Like, ah! <laughs> I refuse to give HBO my money because they stole the books from me. I, I can understand. So, he was so close to the end. <laughs> Did he really, like, does he have one book left, or? He probably could have done it in one if he would have done it before he wrote the whole entire thing for HBO. Did he just write them an outline? I know he wrote the, the season finale for the second season, and boy, could you tell. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of... There's a lot, there are an awful lot of pages in those books. Um, and there's a lot that doesn't translate well to the screen, I don't think. <laughs> there are lots of pages in those books. They are, they are all... You know, they're all about like that. Like... Um, like say that no. oh, you... <laughs> Count of Monte Cristo sized yeah, yeah. <laughs> every yeah. single one of them and yeah well he's he probably could have finished there was probably there probably was one more book but I think now he's saying there's at least two maybe I don't know is he going to base it on what the TV show turned out to be or is it going to be assume. like Hitchhiker's Guide oh I don't know. I would. I guess I would assume he's going to. Because um, I think, in general, like the overarching storyline, I think he was pretty true to. I think a lot. He screwed with a lot of the details, right. um, as it does, as inevitably when something gets translated to the screen. But yeah, we were just yeah. talking. Eric and I were talking earlier about uh, Stranger Things, the mm -hmm. the Winona Ryder nineteen eighties yeah. doohickey. Um, yeah. Did you see the Frankenstein meme that was going around? Mm -mm. Let me see if I can pull this up. I'm not. I'm not sure if I can, but I will try. So will this show up on the Hangout, or do I need to be looking at the YouTube? I think it will probably only. Oops. I think it'll probably only hang up, show up on the YouTube because everything is now only showing up on the YouTube. But it's a. Uh, I have all these different things I can capture. I can capture. Let's see if I can get the YouTube on my phone while Ooh. I'm Google hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, nope. That was the wrong one. Yes. As far as Game of Thrones goes, AT said he could drag it out forever the way Robert Jordan did. And then uh. he died! <laughs> That's the other problem with that one. Somebody else had to finish it because he died died before he finished the series. That's just wrong. Yes. That's just Could not be wrong. allowed. I don't know. I think Brandon Sanderson did a, he did a fairly decent job. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I can cover my face with this, this meme from, so this was from uh, Stranger Things. Actually, I'm going to have to make it go over us. We can hear. We can, we can hear the audio. So a bunch of people either emailed emailed this to me, or uh, I think a couple people posted it in the Facebook group that in episode six of the Stranger Things show, the girl who is the the one who was uh, treated badly at the um, the main question site, like the, you know, the, the mystery site, that she right. actually has this scene that matches line for line, chapter four from Frankenstein, which I, which I just loved. And it's true, it's, it's dead on. So that was fun. But that's, um, Sarah, huh? Pardon? Can't get it to share. Oh no! It it it's gonna be. It'll show up on the live stream. There's just a little lag, right? Yeah. It must be a big lag. There is kind of a big lag. Um, now that I have that live over there and this live over yeah. here. Yeah. I also goofed with my computer a little bit to see if I could make the height thing better. I wish we had more sun here today. What's your what's your weather been like? We've had just the most disgusting summer I ever remember having. <laughs> really? 
Oh, it's been so humid here. Oh, no. Usually we have a little bit of that, but it has been literally tropics levels. Oh, wow. Of, yeah, it's been icky. Oh, wow. Oh, well, now I know what's been happening. It's because it was the wrong screen. Oh, no, everything's yeah, making more sense. Yeah. All right, well, now, now I think it will eventually. So, um, so now everybody can see this crazy thing. I had to go back and look at the, the live stream on uh, the YouTube site as well. So I'm sorry, everybody, that this is just... There. Yep, there it is. So that's the girl, the, the main girl of mystery in, uh, in Strange, Stranger Things. And if, if people haven't seen anything about this, because uh, Andrew completely missed it, this was a um, an ode to 1980s uh, scary flicks, kind of. Right. But not. Yeah. But it wasn't like Halloween or or Friday the Thirteenth. It was just the kind of mysterious. It's like the Goonies on crack. I guess it's like hard Goonies on crack. Hardcore Gooniness. <laughs> nice explanation. You know, because it's the kids and it's they're doing all the stuff. But Winona Ryder plays the mom and Winona Ryder was. I thought she was fantastic. She was good in that. I yeah. was very happy. And as I said to Erica, for uh, an actress at her age to be that willing to be that snotty. And I don't mean <laughs> stuck up. I mean, you know, like bawling yeah. snot coming out of her nose, kind of crying. Uh, I thought that was awfully brave of her because Hollywood is not particularly kind when um, when those kinds of things have happened on screen before but um, but crafty stuff it's been so long since we've all been here at the same time Dawn what have you been up to lately um actually not a lot because it was kind of crunch season in the youth soccer world <laughs> um, but I did do some Olympic knitting Ooh. with some of my hands on, which was fun. Yay! And made... Ooh, okay. Ooh. Now I changed the camera. It's a hat. It's actually for my littlest one, so I don't know if it'll fit me. Oh, what's that? It was just a slouchy. Ooh, I do have it wrong. Slouchy hat. Oh, cute. Yeah, it's one strand of blue and one strand of cream applied together. So that's for my little guy. Aww. Um, and then this is cable mittens. Oh, cute. And these were the um, the Navajo ply mm -hmm. that. I tried for the Tour de Fleece earlier in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it turned out, this was Corydale, and it was a really grabby Corydale. Um, so I don't think it was a really great yarn choice for that because it didn't slide on itself very easily. Right. Um, but it made some nice mitts. Hey, we and like mitts. And in Minnesota, mitts are good. Yes. Because we, we lose them all winter long. I thought that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Minnesota so is full of my children's lost mittens. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they are. <laughs> yeah. So I have, and none of these projects are on Ravelry yet, so I'll have to get them added so people can see the, so both of the hats, the patterns just came out of my head, but the mittens are actually somebody's pattern. How cute. Yeah. I like those. Those are really subtle. Yeah. They, this was um, some Briar Rose Fibers top. Um, and it's very, they're a lot, it, they turned out really stripey, um, subtly stripey. Yeah. But it did, did exactly what I wanted it to do with her fiber. Um, and it preserved the subtle stripes that she dies into it. Right. Because when I, hold them still for a second, people are having a hard time seeing them on you. When I tend to, um, like two ply it or three ply it traditionally, um, the colors all merge and get kind of muddy and much more uniform, which is fine, but um, it kind of uh, 
loses her die technique. Oh, that's beautiful. That makes the that makes the top so cool. You can see it a little bit better because there's a hat too. Ooh. Uh, yeah, you can see it better on the hat. Yeah, I think you can see it better on the hat too. That's and this one is for my kiddo who has the really big head. <laughs> <laughs> so it's huge on me. But his head is enormous. Um, but this is what I wanted to ask you about. So, you know, it's just a tube and then cinched at the top. Right. But can you see? I can't get the hole to close. Oh, no. Oh, I've no. never had this problem before. Yeah. You know, usually you just, like, put the thread through all the, you know, put the tail through all the stitches and then can you cinch it close? Yeah. It won't cinch all the way closed. It's like there's too many stitches to cinch it all the way closed. Can you go back can you go back and do any more decreases around to make them fewer? Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. It's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> Aside from you know, putting a puff ball on the top of it and calling it done. I know a big pump, a huge pom pom. <laughs> yep. If, if I hadn't used all the yarn I would do that, but I used all the yarn. Mm. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to pull it out and pick up the stitches and rip back a bit and decrease. Right, right, right. Oh. Yeah. Um, so there's that. That's what I've actually been working on. And then, oh my gosh, endlessly binding off <laughs> the million stitches on that Martina Bain pattern stuff. Oh, wow. Someday, they will all be gone. But it's doing... Which, Which one was this? This is the... Shoot, I can't remember the name. Hold on, I have the pattern. Okay. The Nuvum. Oh. That's in... So this one is two strands of um, a lace weight silk merino held together. And you knit it from the center out. Let's see if I can. So you start in the center with a gigantic, like Judy's Magic cast on. Right. Um, and then knit in a giant oval around and around and around. Mm. And you have increases at each end. Mm. Um. So I like it, and it's going to be really awesome, but for the end, you do a little bit of ruffle, so you double what is already a gajillion stitches. <laughs> you double them and knit a little ruffle, and then you have to find them all off. Uh, and it's taking forever. Uh, because I don't have a lot of patience for it, and I'm like, I would rather knit some mittens. <laughs> yeah. There are those days. But, so I have to get that done, and when I get that done, then I'm going to cast something else on with the rest of my hand spun. The rest of my Briar Rose hand spun is going to live together. I have more than one ball of each of these. Let's see if I can pick them all up together. Ooh. Them's pretty. Yeah, so I'm going to, I think, knit a hitchhiker with them. Ooh. So it'll be like a progression from the gold to the kind of purpley's, mauve's. Yeah. Great color combination. Yeah. I yeah. Like. It well. Yeah. All of Chris's stuff kind of goes together. Right. Anyway, I think, but um, I think it'll be nice. And I've had the hitchhiker pattern forever, and I have never knit one. And it's garter stitch, so I think the hand spun will show up really well. That's very cool. And it, this stuff's about worsted weight, so I'll be able to use some kind of big needles to make it really drapey, and it'll go super fast, and it'll be the anti nuvum <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Just in case. So that's, that's about it, aside from, um, you know, fridge pickles, and I'm stocking canning tomatoes, and 
it's apple season in Minnesota. Oh, I know. That's the that's the thing mm-hmm. I'm I am very much looking forward to is uh, going and doing some of that in the the small spans of time that I've got in between running here and there. Here and there, and the other thing we actually I actually just found an apple source I didn't know about. Really? Um, because here in Minnesota, we're kind of in the heart of appleness, and the University of Minnesota is actually one of the major national apple research facilities in terms of new varietals and things like that. So, like the Honeycrisp was developed here, mm. at the University of Minnesota, the Sweet Tango, Dustar, um, stuff like that. And I found out that our landscape arboretum has an apple barn. What? And yeah. And they have all of the um, horticultural research centers apples. Wow. So you can go get them before they've even named them. Wow. <laughs> My daughter and I went out there yesterday and we have all these little, these, you know, half packed bags of numbered apples. I love it. I know. They're Franken apples, but they are so delicious. Franken apples are just fine. Yeah, they're really, there's one that's a combination of a Zestar and a Honeycrisp that might be the best apple I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. I want, I want them all. I know. Yeah. (laughs) My kid, I had to stop my little one yesterday after he was like, can I have a fourth apple? (laughs) <laughs> You're like, um, let's wait until tomorrow get some protein in you maybe some dairy yeah exactly <laughs> let's 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 hold off on that for just a moment yeah that's awesome yeah, yeah those things yeah, can make so. you really shaky they are they are so sweet if you haven't had any any protein uh in the yeah. recent time slot you're gonna feel feel yeah. the sugar it's gonna go over the edge, but it's it's my favorite part about this time of the year is the apples that we get up here. They're good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like I. That's one of the things I like best about being in the the Northeast is just not just the seasons, but the appleness of the seasons. I really mm-hmm. and the canning and all that stuff. But this year I'm gonna have more time to do. I hope um, more of my canning that I like doing. So. Fun. That will be good. It'll be chutney all over the place. Mm. I've been marmalade these last what? couple of years. What makes a marmalade a marmalade and not a jam or a jelly? I think it's chunkiness. I don't really know. Well, and at least the marmalades I make, like they usually tend to be like a citrus based or like rhubarb. So I think they're self gelling. They may be more acidic. Well, because the you know, when you make a true orange marmalade, you leave the pea, the rind mm-hmm. on the orange, and it's the stuff in the orange rind that makes it gel. Set up gel by a gel. Nice. And the same thing with rhubarb. Rhubarb has that stuff in it. <laughs> we had a blueberry festival here, and we got my mother, whose name is Barbara, we got her blueberry jelly. Or, yeah. yeah, jelly that um, was blueberry and rhubarb. That's a combination I haven't tried before. But we don't have, you know, we don't, blueberries, blueberries don't really grow here in Minnesota well. Mm. Um, so we'll have to, at least not in my part of the state, of course, it's different. If I catch mm-hmm. some, I will uh, send some over. Yeah. I could try it with some frozen and see what happens. Mm. Because I'm, my rhubarb plant is the one thing that's doing really, really well in my garden this year. And I could harvest it for the fourth time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> No, yeah. did you see the the weather report for the fall that came out? Because you guys looked like you're right on the border between colder than average and quite a bit warmer than average. And oh, I, I went colder than average. Colder than average. <laughs> see, you like it. I do. That's why you live there. It is. And <laughs> and why you have things like the squirrel scringy. Yeah. <laughs> Which we'll have to get out now that it's. And the, the weather's getting colder. Yeah, and then and then you're gonna have to take video of a squirrel jumping up <laughs> and squirrel. latching on to the corn and going boing, boing. It that is, is really funny. So much fun to watch the squirrel yeah. the intrepid among them go and jump on these things. 
I was telling my dad about that and he said, oh, that makes a lot of sense if you live in Minnesota. <laughs> Why, yes, it does. We got an answer about marmalade. Oh, excellent. Right. So that was it. You're right. Excellent. Well, there we go. Nice. Excellent. That's like that Judge John Hodgman that where he had to have Alton Brown on the podcast as his expert witness because the the woman claimed that her mother had tried to kill her husband by canning something badly because she wouldn't use no. the instructions on the internet. And, Botulism. Yeah. <laughs> And it turned out it was her own fault. It was the 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 daughter's fault because she had added corn to the. Uh, oh. They were making salsa. She'd added corn at the last minute and changed the acidity, mm -hmm. and threw the whole balance off. And her husband ate the one with the corn, and yeah, he got food poisoning. But it was not the pressure, mother's fault. Pressure can that corn. <laughs> well, and that was the thing: is the mom, the mom who was doing the setup, she had never canned anything with corn in it. So she'd mm -hmm. only done highly acidic stuff, which is what I've done, right. or or water jams, bath. jams or jellies. Yeah, and it's I mean it's what my great grandmother did. It's a water bath. You just boil everything. I've never had anything go wrong. Right. But that's why Judge John Hodgman had Alton Brown come on and and listen to the testimony, and then <laughs> serve as an expert witness. It was, it was the thing that sold me on that podcast because I was like, oh, John Hodgman, he can be funny. That's great, but. But when he had Alton Brown on and he took on that particular case, I was like, I think I love him. Ah, nice. It was really good and funny and uh, and very light, which there are days when lightweight and fun is really, really good. Lately, a lot. Oh, yes. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to mute myself for a minute because, of course, the dog who did get put upstairs now is insisting that he can't be upstairs anymore he's gonna die all right i'm gonna i'm gonna so, pull erica up i'll be right back okay so erica what have you been up to so i'll try to, to speak while you guys have me so i'm um dawn the the three pattern booklet i was talking about is um uh the gang on the uh, chat room helped me come up with an idea that um, I'm going to do a three pattern ebook uh, where people can either get a discount by buying all three of them together in the ebook or they can buy each pattern individually and they'll all be similar, uh, similar stitch patterns, but one a garter based uh, Mobius cowl one a half circle pie shawl and one a full circle pie shawl um, and then uh, so I'm currently working on the half circle one and um, I need to get some yarn to do the rough draft of the full circle one I'm going to get some undyed stuff from Dharma Trading Company because it's cheap and uh Oh, thank you. Tara says I sound great now. I didn't do anything Yay. except put in the, the headphones. Take And I took out my hearing aids. <laughs> uh, and so I can't really show that, but it's it's still growing. It's in that kind of goldenrod color of the Cascade Forest Hills. Um, I had a Pinterest fail. I uh, was looking for a grab-and-go uh, baked oatmeal type thing uh, to have for breakfast for for the under 18 crowd here in the house and um, I, I it sounded really good and I'll post the link to the recipe because maybe somebody else will have better success than I did I didn't have applesauce and I substituted peanut butter for the applesauce and they smell really great and Abby says they taste okay. They taste all right, but they're just okay. And the the tops are 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 nice and crispy, but it's gooey inside. So, um, anyway, That's very um, sad. I'm hoping that I can find uh, a recipe that'll work. 
better. Because uh, I, I, with Abby having long days now with play rehearsals, uh, I need to be able to send multiple kinds of food with her when she goes off the day. Yep. yep. That sounds familiar. And, and then uh, I wish I could share photos with you, but I'll put a link to it. We had, I was telling Heather, we had a massive amount of smoked pork produced in this house yesterday. Um, or Saturday to yesterday. We thought we were going to a barbecue on uh, Labor Day. So Andrew did two great big pork butts in the smoker. And, um, but he got sick, so we didn't, he didn't go. And I didn't go because I had a headache. So we had massive amounts of, of pulled pork, but most of it's in the freezer now. But it is really good. I would share the recipe, except uh, it was kind of a cobbled together thing where he used the last bits of several different rubs that he had and combined them. Tara said it looked amazing on Instagram. Yeah, I, it, it tasted as good as it looked, Tara. Um, and the other thing, ooh. A.T. says she tried mason jar fruit pies. They're in four-ounce jars. Perhaps they'd work for Abby. That's a thought. I'll look, I'll look that up. Thank you, A.T. Um, mm. But any, any kind of um, not, not ridiculously sweet, um, you know, somewhat healthy uh, grab-and-go uh you know, baked oatmeal kind of things. I'm, I'm definitely up for, I've been looking on Pinterest, but if anybody's got any suggestions that have worked for them that are easy, that would, that would be great. Um, also want to continue, want to continue to pimp the, uh, fall sweater challenge, uh, fall sweater challenge.com. Uh, and let's see it. The, oh, and the the other thing is for those who are following the CPAP saga. Yeah, I got a new mask. Uh, hey, it's a half sexy. sexy. It's a a, a a hybrid thing, so it doesn't go over my nose. It goes under, and I look like Snuffleupagus. Wow. I, I like, like the, the snuffle up aspect, aspect of it, though. It, you know, it goes over the head and everything. It's um, still getting used to it and uh, still haven't made it through five nights in a row of being able to keep it on the whole night without it leaking. But we'll get there. I'm determined. I'm going to get there. But it doesn't give me the horrible, rashy thing. So that's really wonderful. Yay. That's and the only other thing is uh, today's today's scarf shawl thingy. Tara wants a Weasley sweater from, from Harry, Harry Potter? Potter. Yeah. Oh, for the fall sweater challenge. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, go for it, Tara. Get it, see if you can get it done by by uh, Rhinebeck. And um, yeah, I hope it works too, Tara. And this is my, this is the current, so I hope I'm holding it still enough yeah, to be that's seen. Great. So it's Cascade 220 fingering, which I just love to death. It's uh, 273 yards of 100% wool um, fingering weight. It's not super wash, but if you're not using it for socks, who cares, right? <laughs> um, True. And it's in, this is sort of my, my five shades of gray outfit. You can't see my jeans, but they're faded black jeans, so they're gray. The gray shirt and three different shades of gray in the, the uh, scarf. It's, uh, the colors are s silver, charcoal, and jet. Let's see if I can hold it up in a way you can see this, the colors better. Let's see if you can see the better there. The, and it's, it's super simple garter stitch um, with um, just 
the increase is just a stitch on on every uh, the beginning of every row, and then then the double increase in the middle. I like the yarn. I started it started it um, last year on camping and didn't finish it until like a month later. But um, let's see, in Cricut knits, uh, a chasm is or hang on. Uh, Crooked Knits is making a Weasley sweater um, ordered from the original designer in Mill in Scotland and will be making it for her cousin. Nice. You need to send pictures and of that. And a- yeah, and AT says the pies were easy. Frozen pie crust pressed around the jar, then your filling of choice, then cover with crust. You can bake or freeze before baking. Got her from Pinterest. I will look. <laughs> AT also says that gray is the perfect accent color, but perhaps she says that because her hair is gray. That's funny. Um, I'm working 69 on 69 and drizzly and drizzly where where crooked knits is, uh, but they'll take it because uh, Hurricane Hermine was was possibly going to flood us and then didn't. Uh, we we so. were supposed to get hammered with that hurricane, and we had nothing until. 10 minutes before we started the live stream. And now the, the wind has kicked up and we're starting to get clouds and I have no idea what this hurricane is doing. It's just doing its own thing. Yeah, we're, we're still waiting for our, our September warm weather to hit. Um, it should hit any day now. Uh, it's We've got a predicted high of 64 today, but it's uh, this is this is when our summer weather usually comes, so I think I'm, I'm expecting the, warm weather any day. I think, I think you, you might, might be in the uh, cooler than normal fall sector of the country. We're in the very above average sector, so I'm uh, not very happy about that. But well, I wouldn't mind personally if it was cooler than normal. If that meant that the rain came earlier than normal, because we really need it. Um, yeah being here in, in drought land. Um, it's true. The desert. So that's all I got going on. I actually um, knit, knit something this time. Yay for knitting. I know it was that, uh, going, going up, up to the thousand lakes, lakes we had the, um, uh, thousand islands. You mean thousand islands. islands. I, keep I keep calling wanting to call it, it, call it thousand lakes, lakes, but it wasn't, it was, it was thousand islands. Island. And we did, um, it was the most relaxed family vacation I think we've ever had, where everybody just kind of, you know, uh, if we are, we're going to get up and do something, and then we didn't, it's no big deal, so, I, and that normally isn't the way things go, normally it's like, no, we have to go do this thing, and that, that didn't happen, so it was very, very nice, but this is what I worked on, which is uh, Martina Bain pattern, and I, I know I'm going to mispronounce it, it's Ekin and Canton, Canton, and it's a, one of the minor things, I got inspired by Dawn, but, um, but I started That's because in, Martina's awesome. Well, you know, she is, but the, the other reason why I was so intrigued by this particular pattern was because she did a, um, uh, a funky thing. Ooh, I haven't where, seen that one before. Right? It's kind of cool. And then they did, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Uh, oh, wow. Right? That's an interesting construction. It is an interesting construction, and I've, I've had a lot of fun working on it. And then the, let's see if I can. No, it's, this is the tricky part. No, that's not going to work. So, so one, one of the, the things, things that I've been thinking about doing was doing shadow knitting because oh right I, I wound up you mentioned that last week being a sucker and I was at the yarn store there's no way I can pull all of these and I got blues and grays many 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 blues the blues and the grays except now I can't see the grays and I've dumped a bunch of them on the floor. But I like them because many of them are 
a little heathered. And it's nicely wound. And for yarny yarn, you know, the, um, for, for something that looks like Shetland and could be very scratchy, it's actually like I can put it on my skin. So I was excited about it, but then I couldn't, I didn't like anything I tried. I started regular shadow knitting scarf and then a shawl and then, a, but then when I saw the Martina Bame thing, I thought, I can take the row by row from the shadow knitting pattern, but do the mitered construction of the BAME pattern. And so what I got was, I'll show you the first part first. So here's the color progression for the first section, which I like. And then it gets, it gets quite dark at the end. And then I'm almost done with the first miter. Let's see if I'm back far enough that you can see it. There. If my ooing and eyeing are delayed, it's because I can't see you on the hangout. I only see right. you on the. Uh, oh right. On the. I'm doing the same thing. I'm waiting you for it to wait. pop up on the YouTube. You have, you have to, to wait, wait for, for the pop up. up. So. Oh nice. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it still for a sec, so it's easier to see. So, so I have not been cool. unhappy with this. I like the I like the general progression of it, and I'm liking I'm very much liking the way that the the darks pop. Let's see if I can get closer so you can see some of the shadowiness. There we go. There's the shadowy part. Very pretty. Yeah, I've been I've been rather happy with this one. So it's um. The, the thing, thing that I've liked, liked best about it, though, is that even though it's this miter, and even though it's the shadow knitting, and even though it's the changing the colors, it's really TV knitting. There is nothing stressful about it at all, which is really good right now. So it's, um, I have to give it two thumbs up. What, what weight yarn is that, and what size needles, because it looks really loose and drapey. It is loose and drapey. It is, uh, I think it's fingering, and I can tell you. Oh, and for those playing at home, it really is all blues and, and grays and just. It um, is. Yeah, and ranging I, ranging I actually, from it looks like a light gray blue to kind of a midnight blue. Yeah. Would that be accurate? Yeah, yeah it's, it's going, going from, from a, a, a very light gray, gray almost a white, white to a, a very dark gray. gray. <clears throat> that would be helpful. Heather, I keep thinking it's the same colors as that shawl that I sent you. No, no they're, they're different. different. They are. They, they are, are different. different. Oh, is it? Yeah, because yeah. there there, there are, are some purples, purples and greens in the ones that you sent me. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. So, so that's, that's the that's, that's the light to the dark on the, the gray, gray side of things. things. And, and then this is. is the lightest, the lightest to the, the darkest. darkest, is that right? Yeah, the lightest, lightest to the darkest, darkest on the blues. It's really funny watching you on the YouTube and talking to you at the same time. <laughs> it is. I know, yeah. the, the delay, delay is, is wicked. wicked. It's, it's, and, and there's, there's, there's nothing, nothing I can, can do about, about that. Yeah, as you're talking about the blues, the grays, or <laughs> you're holding up the grays on the YouTube, and so it's. Yeah, yeah. Someday technology, technology will catch up with what we needed to do. <laughs> Tara just asked what I was thinking. And she says, Heather, dare we ask what in the world is going on with the back of your hair oh, here? Right? <laughs> because I've got it up in the back because There's it's hot. Something funky going on back there. The, the way, way that, that the, the microphone, microphone, the way that the microphone sits on, or, or not, not the microphone, the headphones, headphones sit, sit, I have to clip it to, it to the back of my shirt. shirt. And, and if, if I, I have, have my hair on top of it, Plus, plus the clip, clip. it either snags, snags or it gets, gets just too hot. hot. And, and so, so I thought, ooh, I know what I can, I can do. I can just put my hair up in the back and keep it off my neck so it's not snagging my headphones, it's not snagging the clip, everything's fine. But yeah, if I turn my head, it looks like garbage. So. Yeah, it looks pretty funny. Although, you know what, it actually, what it would really look like, it would be awesome, is if I wanted to go for Halloween, uh, as one of the 
stepsisters in, in Cinderella, Cinderella, right? Because didn't they have the front down, but the knot on the top of their head? That's what I should do. In the Disney version, yes. Yeah, I believe it, it was the Disney version. Yeah, let's see if I can do that. So, so, oh, speaking of, um, um, for anyone who is paying attention to, see, for anyone who's paying attention to Once Upon a Time, I have heard that Mr. Hyde from Jekyll and Hyde is going to be on. There's a rumor that Dorian Gray might be on. And there's one more character from one of our books. Okay, so you're going to have to tell me. I... I watched, like, religiously since when that started. And I watched until, let's see, I watched through the the Captain Hook thing, but then once they added Allison, I was like, I couldn't take it anymore. No, that 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 went away pretty pretty quickly. quickly. Um, We watched... Uh, How are they going to sandwich it? Should I go back? I I don't know. Should I go back and watch more? I, I'll, I'll tell, tell you, you, we fell apart watching the show with the boys because um, they were fascinated by it. We we stopped watching and kind of fell apart on it when they hit the Peter Pan segment yeah. where they were actually in Neverland. Right. That didn't work so well for the, the boys. They weren't as interested in that mythology. But mm-hmm. then the next one, the next big one was... Um, Selena, Selena, they brought brought in the actress who'd been the redhead on Lost in, like, the last two seasons. And she's the Wicked Witch. Oh, right. And And she is just deliciously deliciously evil. evil. They have, they don't hold back writing for her. She's just... Yeah, she she really is. Yeah. Yeah. And she's about as far as we got with that season. Yeah. Yeah. And And so so now they've they've been been dealing with her, but then this season they brought in King Arthur and Merlin. And I gotta say... Hamilton, Hamilton and their um, colorblind casting, which everybody talked about being inspired, and it is as far as Broadway goes. It, Hamilton was behind the times compared to what Once Upon a Time's been doing. Yeah, so, they they've been out there with their they've been with their casting for a while. Uh, just starting with their Wicked Witch. I'm, I mean, she's you know this fabulous Latina babe, and she is so good. And and then they just kept. They kept going, and I've been, I've been really impressed by the "it's not a thing" part of it, where it's just we just cast good actors. So it's been, I think it's been kicking back in again. Um, and I, I heard that uh, that the Once Upon a Time podcast was going to be looking at at uh, Jekyll and Hyde a little more closely. So we'll see what they have to say about about the Jekyllness and the Hydeness of things. Jekyllness. It's a new word, the, Jekyllness. The Jekylltude. The Jekylltudity. There we go. I'm all for creating new words. Things get boring otherwise. Oh, it is the Count. Tara says the Count, Count of Monte Cristo is the other one I'm thinking of. It is him, right? Ah, it's not Count Dracula. I, this whole thing, the International Man of Mystery, Byronic Hero, Count of Monte Cristo stuff, where where we are at in the book. The, the last chapter we did, I thought was one of the most brutal chapters we've ever done, ever, where they they view the... Um, the... Beheading? The behead, yeah, the behead, well, the, and the gut, I mean, it's... Ugh. Right before the, the carnival starts, and then this week's chapter is the carnival, and... It, it, there is a a sense of disquiet when you do those back to back, going from this this violence and the count's rant about it into the hey, let's go have a party, and you kind of go, wow, that's kind of kind of in. It's creepy, and it it does get that dark, the dark Byronic hero side that really does blend into the Jekyll and Hyde and the, the um, Dorian Gray. Even though they're separated by so much time, Dumas, I was saying to Andrew yesterday, Dumas really out Dumas, or out Dickens Dickens, and he did it before Dickens showed up on the scene at all. Because he, 
He's self-promoting in this chapter. You'll crack up when you hear this week's chapter. He's, he's self-promoting right, left, and center. He's doing all sorts of goofy stuff and uh, letting you know that he's traveled because he actually was at Carnival in Rome. And he, he can attest to the fact that what they're saying in this chapter is true, even though he's the one in the chapter who's saying it because he wrote it. It's just, he, he is a master. And, and I, I think, think he and Oscar, Oscar Wilde probably would have had a really good time drinking together. <sighs> but, but they never had a chance. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah Tara, Tara, I know Tara, Tara popped up and said, I was just wondering how dark the count will become. I, this is the darkest you're going to see for a while. And then you'll see more later. But it's... It is, it is an interesting book, and I, I was especially uh, comforted to hear from Amy last week on the podcast, or a couple weeks ago on the podcast, that when she read the expurgated version in school, that all of this stuff had been taken out, because I was thinking, wow, I don't know how you could teach this to, or hand it over to little kids, so I feel better now. Yeah, the... Yeah, reading the unabridged version is a very different experience than reading the version that's um, generally taught, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're, we're getting, getting the, the good, good stuff, stuff, but we're almost done with Rome and almost back to Paris. Then we'll, we'll get, get more French. French. We'll have to try on our French, French accents, accents again. again. <laughs> we used to joke in, the, in, in Arizona that you get people who say, can I get a taco? <laughs> no. Nope. Really? That bad? That's horrible. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. sorry you can't, can't get a taco. You can get, get a taco, taco, but we don't. We don't actually have any tacos. tacos. Sorry. Taco sounds like a, like it would be a Japanese thing. T a k o. Right. Ooh. Yeah. That, good point. And that, and that actually sounds good. good. Yeah. So, uh, ooh, parmesan, parmesan cheese, cheese crisps. crisps. Oh, oh, yeah. What are you looking at? Where did you go with Parmesan it, cheese crisps? Uh, my eyes gravitated towards Sorry, the it's chat a, it's a side, <laughs> side conversation. A.T. Blanton gave me a suggestion it's of something like, for Abby. It's, it's like, like magnetism. magnetism. My yeah, eyes saw Parmesan and went, like, cheese. Yeah, literally. literally. See, now I'm going to have to oh, figure out how to have the chat up at the same time. Now I need, like, the hangout, and I'm going to, like... The video on my phone and now i need my ipad so i can get the chat up there too i know yeah i do the recording on the ipad and then i have my my uh the chat up on my laptop it's, it's working. working all right oh barbara's leaving us bye, so barbara. bye barbara and at thank, thank you for the gluten-free ping on that one i'm happy to know I'm, and for anybody who's heard <coughs> and is wondering what's going on there was an article that was released a week, a week or two, or two ago, ago on the gluten-free gluten thing, saying that they have been unable to replicate any of the gluten insensitivity tests, that celiac is celiac, but the stuff that I've been dealing with is gluten insensitivity, and they're like, yeah, 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 well, that doesn't exist. And the thing that was interesting about it is we, we had started to hypothesize that it's not gluten-gluten that's the problem. It's gluten combined with other things, whether it's other preservatives or other foods or... Oh, interesting. <laughs> and that looks like that's in fact what it is. That because our stomach bacteria, the good bacteria, we've, we've killed off several strains already with pesticides. We don't know what they did, but there's some, some kind of combining that's going on. Um, and there's a, a food list that they, they are publishing um, it's got a funny acronym. It's, oh, someone in the chat's going to know what it is. It's like the MAGWAP list of, of bad foods. But it's really, it's not that you can't eat them. It's that if you eat them, you need to know that combining these with each other or with gluten, you could get yourself into trouble. And, and yeah, AT just said, oh, that makes so much sense. And it does. It absolutely does, because there's no explanation for why I would get a migraine and three days of fogginess from eating bread. So did we talk about, um, I can't remember when, 
it was over a year ago now, so I can't remember if it was on this. I don't think it was. About um, one, the varietals of wheat that we use now and how they're so genetically different than the what wheat used to be. Yeah. But then two, how we create our bread and a lot of those products is very different than how it used to be. That And that slow, that really fast process relatively is very different. Um, bread used to basically be like a fermented product. Right, like, like sourdough. There used to be, there, yes, it all used to be like sourdough. There was an enzymatic process involved in making bread that modified the gluten and proteins in the wheat that doesn't exist in when you use like dried yeast in a packet right. and just do do the, you know, I can have bread in four hours kind of a thing. Right. Um, so it, it physically, that process doesn't change the wheat in the same way that we used to change wheat so we could consume it. Which, Which is, is why, why sourdough, sourdough, there are people who are gluten intolerant who have said that sourdough doesn't, <laughs> doesn't exactly in the same way. And I was right. working on that, uh, on trying to move that direction. My, my fear of the pain and the migraine and the three-day fog has started to dissipate after, what is it, five years? It's something ridiculous like that. But... But I still, there have been times when Andrew will look at me and say, I think you got gluten. And it's true because I, I suddenly, I can't, I can't, I can't complete a sentence. I can't make up my mind. He can ask me questions and I'll just kind of look at him going, uh, I got nothing. And, and I'll have a stomach ache and we go, oh, well, something happened. But now it's sounding like it may not have been getting gluten. It may have been combining Something. Things. But, but I'm totally still, still doing, doing the, the wild yeast um, for the gluten-free homemade bread when it's not summer because we can't turn the oven on here when it's summertime. So I will be back to doing the, the sourdough really, really soon. And maybe I'll try kind of, you know, adding in a little bit of regular flour and see. So I would say Ground. don't try don't try regular flour. Go to, like... I guess I don't know that you have it out there, Get but here in Minnesota, we have people who are growing heirloom varieties of wheat. Yeah, yeah we, we do, do here, here too. too. Because the bread I get at the end of that process is, I mean, it's bread, <laughs> you know, but it affects my body totally differently than if I use, you know, regular all-purpose flour from the grocery store. Right. Yeah, that's um, that's uh, one of the things that I uh, it was. In, I was trying to remember where I was. It was in Arizona. Um, we had one of uh, Thing One's teachers was Mormon, and uh, they grind their own wheat. And and she had been talking to me right after this started it, and. And she said, you know, I'd be very curious to know if you would respond the same way to the, the wheat that we grind because they were, they had friends who were growing it. And it was, if not an heirloom variety, a varietal, it was at least not publicly prepared by a wheat conglomerate. And I, I was so scared at that point, I didn't, I didn't try it. Now I kind of regret not getting a little something of it. Well, if you want to play around with it, I have a really good source that's down by my sisters in Mankato. Um, oh, cool. And they grind they grind their own, so they don't even send it out to a mill. Right. They grow it and they grind it, so they have total control over it. Yeah. I could get you I could get you that resource if you want to play around with it. That, that sounds, sounds great. great. I, would I would very much like, like to like to do that. that. And, and it it is two forty one. We have been oh. <laughs> talking a long time, and I'm so sorry about the technical stuff, you guys. I'm going to uh, play with this sucker again and figure out how to, how to do it. And AT, um, people do catch wild yeast. I used grapes to help start the process because the grapes that have the powdery whiteness on them, that's, um, that's natural yeast. And so you put that into the, the liquid, and, and then you just leave that sucker out, and it's the weirdest thing. I did not have to use butterfly net, Erica. I, I, I only used... I just have this visual image. 
I just <laughs> used grapes and water. Don't catching the wild yeast. <laughs> I know. Hunting, Hunting the, the mountain, mountain fresh, fresh yeast. It's awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, you guys. And next week, there is no crafty chat. Next week, I'm going to be traveling, and it's just going to be too crazy because, uh, as you know, the Google Hangouts thing is all topsy-turvy, and we are just stuck. Um, but we will be back the week after the 20th. So we'll see you then. But I can, I can come hang out in the chat room next yes. week if, if people want that. I can come, come chat. I can totally folks. set that up for you. I could try and find the chat room. Awesome. <laughs> I haven't found it yet, but I haven't really looked. So, <laughs> Erica, if you tell me how to get there, I'll chat with you. Excellent. Excellent. It's only a matter of time before we all find the chat room. There you go. All right. So, I'm if you could put a, a, a fake marker in there uh, for next week, Heather, then yep. we can go to the chat room. I absolutely can. It, it won't even be fake. Cool. Cool. <laughs> I'm reading, I know the chats are hilarious. Yes, don't leave us. Please hang out with us. Yes. Yes, it'll happen. And honestly, if I, I'm, I'll be in Dallas. If I can sneak on at lunchtime, because it might be, uh, I will try to say hello. Yeah, you'll be my time zone. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I will Just be. really far away. <laughs> and warmer, I think. I don't know. With how our we we're supposed to get up into the high 80s again. And it's been raining here, so that means it's going to be darn humid, too. I'm so oh, sorry. ick. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Well, go, go get a, a cold drink. I have my cold iced tea, and I have my cold water, and uh, somewhere between the two of them I will pull off. <laughs> okay. All right. Take All care. right. I'm going to go see if the sicky needs anything. Yes. Poor, poor sicky. Tell, tell him to feel better. better. Oh, oh, AT asked if you're going to see our narrator while you're out in Dallas at the podcaster thing. I'm, I'm going, going to, to try. try. I am not, not going, going to have, have my own car. car so I'm kind of constrained, constrained as far as uh, where I can go and who I can see, which I'm not thrilled about. But I'll do, do my best. It would be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Cool. Alrighty. Take care. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Ta -ta. Bye. Bye.